Hi, I'm Brian Saunders with Big Time Software, and today I want to talk a little bit about the mobile add-on for our IQ line of products. Now, with the mobile add-on, we tried to do more than just give you a simple way to start and stop timers and add rudimentary time entries to your application. What we're really trying to do is provide professional level features to your thumbs through your mobile device. And so I'd like to get into that a little bit today uh, with you. And to do that, I've logged into the device here so that you can take a look at it. When you first log into the application, you'll see a screen that looks just like this. And you can see on the upper right, I've got a timer running. We're going to ignore that for now, but I'll come back and talk about it in a minute. Uh, and the application is organized in these four squares here, time and expenses, and then project and staff list. The project list gives me access to all of my projects at a glance, everything that I have rights to see. Uh, the staff list does the same thing for my staff, so I can get a quick list of folks who work for the firm, maybe phone numbers, etc. And then the area where we'll spend the most time here is in time and expense tracking. So that's the timesheet icon in the upper left and that expense icon in the upper right here. So we'll go through each of these. I'd kind of like to start down here with the staff list. If you happen to be out of the office like I am most of the time and uh, not uh, blessed with a great memory, uh, then the staff list gives you a chance to go through the folks who work at the firm that you have access to. Click on any of these names here and uh, open up the information for that staff member in order to see you know, the basics, email, phone, address, etc. And it lets you do things like send a, a simple text or, or make a phone call. So what it does is it gives me more than just a simple list of name, uh, you know, address, phone number, and it really lets me actually interact with that list and do things like send text messages, everything that I need to do from the road with that staff. So super helpful in terms of getting information right to the point where I need it. We get the same thing on the project list here on the lower left as well. So I click on the project list icon. I get a list of all of the projects that I have rights to see. And this is massively important in the mobile application because with the IQ line of products and this mobile add-on, all of the security settings that you've created within your firm's database get applied across the product line. So if you don't give your staff access to any of the project list details, then they won't see it on the mobile application. If you give your managers access to the, to the projects that they're staffed on or that they manage, then those are the applications, those are the projects that they'll see here in the project list. So uh, it's important to note that this list, I happen to have you know, a couple hundred projects in here that have been downloaded, and it's just because I have rights to see those, those projects. That's why they're showing up. So I can click on any one of these, American Capital, and I can see within there the address, the contacts that exist, phone, email, etc. If I need to send a quick text or make a quick phone call while I'm on the road, I can literally, again, just click on any of these numbers and the system will let me call or send that text. Uh, I can also click on the address and open that address up in either Google Maps or the local iPhone map uh, in order to kind of navigate toward that uh, location. So that's kind of the idea behind the project list and the staff list. Super helpful in terms of keeping track of the uh, various parts of your uh, uh, company as you're, as you're on the road. So we've covered project and staff in the general kind of format here. Let's dig into time a little bit because the, the majority of the time when you log into the mobile application, you're probably going to be logging in to track time or track expenses. So let's take a quick look at that. I mentioned earlier on that I've got a timer running, and I don't normally use timers because I don't have time you know, within the day as I switch from job to job to kind of fiddle with a timer. I like to track time you know, a couple times during the day, right before lunch and right before I leave. But a lot of people use timers, which is great. And in big time, it's extremely easy to do. I can open it up. You can see here the detail behind it. I can start that timer right off the bat, stop it if I need to. Uh, and big time will just kind of keep it going and, and tell me it's out there and active. Uh, but, and so that's how timers work, start, stop, and save. Uh, but the, the spot where a lot of people like to work is here in the timesheet. And I get this week at a glance view here. Uh, and the week at a glance just tells me, you know, it's the week of the 14th, and I can see I'm on Friday, Friday's in bold. Uh, and I can see that I've entered several hours Monday through Thursday. Uh, if I need to click on any of that time in order to get the detail, I can. So I click on Thursday here and I can see what makes up those nine hours. And in this case, you know, I happen to have the, the, the project and the category and some of these have notes. Uh, and if I click on a specific time entry, I can drill down into more detail. If I need to edit that, I can. If I need to copy it, I can. Delete it, whatever I, whatever I need to do. And just hit the back arrow to go back to the week. Now adding time to Friday is super simple. Uh, I literally click the new button here. Uh, it opens up a new entry. It looks just like mail. Uh, I can enter in a few hours, so maybe I'll enter in uh, 1.25 hours. 
uh, and then I can click on that project field. Now, when I click on the project field, I pop up a list of projects that are the ones that I have access to. And if I just type in, say, INC, uh, then I can see all the projects that have INC in them. Uh, and I can choose DTS, for example. Uh, and now I've, I've attached this time entry to that project. I also have category in the list. So I can scroll through a list of categories and choose the one that I want to apply this time to. And then last, I can enter some notes here. And of course, I have a thousand characters to enter. Uh, and I can type that in just like I would an email. And really, the goal behind this uh, functionality was to enable you to use BigTime just like you use your email. So you can see, you know, the, the uh, autocorrect, etc. And once I'm finished with that, that's all I need to do. I can hit save. And that saves that information back to my mobile application. And now this page will refresh and I can see right now that that new entry has been added to the system. If I were in offline mode, then I'd see a little icon next to that so that I know it's on the mobile device and it still needs to be uploaded to the web application. You can enter time, enter expenses in the system online or offline. Big time doesn't care. The mobile app will just sync up with your website once it gets reconnected. That's all there is to, to adding new time. Uh, which is helpful. The other thing that's um, great about the web app, you know, I can go from week to week here and I can see what I've done in prior weeks. I can also copy time from day to day and project to project. So I happen to know that on Thursday, Tuesday, etc., I have this daily meeting, this daily planning scrum. It happens every morning and so I just haven't entered it today. And instead of having to go and re-enter it for that client, I'm just going to go ahead and copy it to today. Uh, it'll let me change the note if I need to, change the client if I need to, and save the copy when I'm finished. And now when I go back in and take a look at Friday, I'll see my 0.75 scrum hours there ready to, uh, ready to upload when the, when the system reconnects. That's uh, hugely helpful if you're, say, an accountant and you've got you know, a stack of 50 or 60 tax returns that you're uh, going to go through in the morning and you're going to spend 15 minutes on each one and just review it and make notes. Uh, rather than have to enter that 50 or 60 times, you can enter it once, and each time you finish a file, you can just hit the, the uh, last one you did. You can hit copy, copy it to today, change the account to whatever other you know, account you happen to be working on, hit save copy, and, and you're done. So you can continue to add uh, you know, little 15-minute increments there. And it's just a great way to keep track of all the items that you've dealt with throughout the day. If I want to get in there and edit this, I can. Just click on it, uh, hit edit, and big time will let me make whatever changes I'd like cancel those edits or save them, whatever I'd like. If I need to delete it, I can delete it. It'll tell me. So very simple uh, way to keep track of all the time within your day. And that's kind of all there is to time tracking. It's really simple. You know, at the end of the week, it is Friday. So when I'm finished, uh, I can close out my time uh, and then I can hit the submit button. And the idea behind the submit button is as a user, we're trying to prevent you uh, having to do anything except hold the, the handheld app, the, the mobile app. So you shouldn't have to log into the website to do your kind of workflow for tracking time and tracking expenses. And if that workflow includes submitting time, then we want to be able to do that right here from the mobile app. So that's what that submit button is for. When I, when I submit as a user, I can no longer edit that time. I can still see it, but I can't edit it. So I've already submitted the week before here, the July 7th week. And if I go into Thursday for July 7th, you can see all of that time is available for me to look at, but it's locked. And if I click on it, you know, and I try to edit it or I hit the edit button, the system actually tells me that the entry is locked and it's already been submitted. So it's just a little visual cue there as a user to tell me why I can't edit that. I can still copy those. So if I need to copy data from last week or, or you know, a couple of, of entries here and there into today, I can do that. So I have full access to my history. I just can't edit it once it's been submitted. So that's kind of the workflow for Timesheet. It's really simple. That timer is still active. So before we go on and take a look at expenses, I'm going to go ahead and open it up and I'm going to convert that timer to an actual time entry. So now the timer has been converted. The entry exists in, as, a, as a physical time entry and I can go ahead and submit my time. That's all there is to time entry. It looks pretty good. So the only thing left to look at is expenses. The last section of the application we're going to take a look at is this upper right area for expenses here. And when I click on that icon, I get a list of all the expense reports that I filed that are still open with the system. So uh, quite a few here that are, that are there in test. Uh, and up at the top, I see all of the entries that I have not yet submitted. And this is great because it lets me get a list of all the receipts that I have open uh, and, and very quickly add a new expense to the system if I need to. So the classic scenario is it's the, you know, the end of a trip, I'm on the plane, I've got 17 receipts here for the trip and I just need to file all of them. 
and that we've made that process really simple. Uh, so I can click this little add expense button here. Um, the system asks me what project I want to attach it to. It also automatically asks me for a type. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to do miscellaneous. Uh, expenses have to be classified. They have to be a, a given type, and so it, it has you do that automatically. Uh, and then I have this little receipt button, this little camera button over here. Uh, so I can click it. I can either upload a picture or take one. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to take one. I'll aim it right here at my receipt. Make sure I get the amount in there and hit the button. And that gives me the receipt. I'm going to go ahead and use it. And now this expense has a receipt attached to it. Uh, I need to enter an amount. And in that case, it is 105. Uh, enter notes if I need to, right here. And when I'm finished typing those notes, I can hit the Save button. And now I've added that receipt. It's as simple as that. It shows up in my list. Again, expenses work exactly the way time entries work. So if I happen to be online, it'll save it automatically up to my big time repository. If I happen to be offline, it'll keep it local on my uh, mobile device, and it'll upload it when it's got time. And they also work the same way. The great thing about having these old filed receipts, here, filed reports here, is this works the same way as time as well. So I can come into my October expenses. Uh, this report you can see at the bottom has been locked because it's already been submitted. But uh, I can get into them and look at any of these, uh, open them up and see the detail, the notes, etc. This happens to be some some uh, sample data that we've entered in the system to give you an idea of what it looks like. Uh, if I had receipts, I could look at those as well. So it gives me all of that information here at my fingertips. And finally, uh, once again, once I'm finished with my expenses, you know, I've logged all 32, I've taken pictures of the receipts, etc. Now I'm ready to submit that expense report. Now, submit, same button down at the bottom. The only difference between submitting a timesheet and submitting an expense report is typically for an expense report, you enter a title here. Uh, so we'll just call this mobile expenses. And when I'm done, I can hit the submit button. And when I do, that expense report now gets submitted. So now all those expenses can be reviewed, posted to my accounting system, paid, billed through to uh, invoices, etc. And all those receipts get uploaded automatically to my big time repository. So tracking expenses is just that simple. We've tried to make it as easy as possible. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. We're already working on integrating corporate credit card charges into this uh, uh, process as well so that when charges come through, you can classify them right away. So it gives you a whole workflow for dealing with corporate credit card charges. So look for that in upcoming releases of the, of the mobile application. But that's kind of all there is to expenses, so very simple to use. So that gives you a good overview of how the whole system works. Uh, we talked about timesheets and expenses, projects and staff. Uh, the most important thing here to remember is that you need a subscription to Big Time IQ, which is a great opportunity for you to upgrade and start to use the new features like mobile in Big Time as you, as you uh, move forward. Great. Thanks. Have a great day.